Hi, it's Laura. I have a little haul from an estate sale today. Do y'all go to estate sales? Um, in theory, I love them, but in practice, I don't actually go that often. They, I live right outside of New York City, and I feel like we're a pretty vintage heavy area as far as like people who resell and things like that. I don't really see my competition in thrift stores, but I don't know if that's because I'm not paying attention or because they don't shop at thrift. I don't know what the deal is, but I feel like estate sales, there's definitely heavy competition. Um, and when I go to estate sales, I definitely see a lot of resellers that are into more hard goods, um, music stuff, a lot of old school resellers. I don't tend to see many vintage clothing resellers, I don't think, but I also feel like they swoop in very beginning of the sale, grab everything and swoop out. And uh, I am not about that vibe. Like, do I want to be the one to get all the stuff first? Obviously, but I don't like the, the like sort of panicked, I have to hurry up and get everything energy. I don't like being among the first people there. Um, I don't want to wait in a line. And it's not that I care about waiting in a line, although today it was 20 degrees outside, so I do care about waiting in a line in 20 degree weather, but I don't like standing there and sort of like, just this feeling that like all the stuff that I want is gone, right? Like I don't, I don't like that. So I usually don't go um, first thing. And also I've been trying to only go to estate sales where like the previews look like stuff I'm really into. And there haven't been that many of them, honestly. So, and I also love the hoarder estate sales because I feel like that's where I'm going to have better luck. The prices are gonna be better. Um, even when it's picked over, there's still a lot of good stuff to pick through. So I like going to those. This estate sale was run by a company um, whose sales always look really good to me, but he's always in the five boroughs of New York City. So I tend to stay away from them because I feel like it's so easily accessible to all of the other vintage sellers from the city. Um, New York City people don't tend to like drive and stuff mostly. So it's a lot of public transportation stuff. So I try to go like a little bit more west, stay in Jersey and go west of Jersey. Anyway, so I went to this one today. It was in Queens, New York. And um, it started at 8.30. I got there at nine. There was obviously already a bunch of people inside. There was a line still. Um, most of the stuff that I had seen online that I was interested in was gone when I got in there, but I still managed to get some good stuff. So. Um, they did sort of do the pricing like by individual piece, but it was reasonable. And let's see what we got. I paid $180 for everything that you're gonna see here today. So let's see what we have. So first I have a couple of aprons. Um, this is really cute. These people seemed like they traveled a lot. There was a lot of mid-century stuff there. In the preview photos, the furniture that was there was oh, so awesome. Um, but I can't do that. I can't do furniture. Anyway, so this is like a little apron they probably picked up on their travels somewhere. So that's cute. Oh, jeezy. Almost immediately, I'm like throwing it in my coffee cup. Here's a little Portuguese apron. These types of things are very cute. I've sold, it says Portugal, and it's got a little rooster. What's funny is that I, until I just picked this up to show you guys, I'm not even kidding. This was all I had seen of the apron, so I didn't know it was a rooster. Usually these are floral, but they've got nice big pockets, which I like. Um, so I picked that up. I've sold these a, a bunch of times on Etsy. I don't remember what I sold them for, and it's been a very long time. So I want to say that in the past, I've sold them in the range of like 18, 20 bucks. Um, I, I don't know what they're going to be like right now. We'll see. Uh, this is a tablecloth, which again, I, I didn't unfold. Like this is kind of what I've got. However, it looks like a really pretty print. I don't usually do table linens. It's not my jam, but this was so pretty. Um, and it, I thought it had a sticker on it still, like it was brandy new. Maybe it fell off, but let's see what it looks like. That's cute, right? I hope you can see it. There. Pretty, very nice. So very, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's ever been used before. Very crisply folded still. Uh, and then the the table linens, apron cloths and stuff were all on the, the main floor, as was this little belt that I picked up. 
Um, so, so for I'm trying to see, I think that if I, that doesn't seem right. Maybe I think that for um, so I, I picked up a bunch of clothing from the second floor and they priced all that stuff for me. And then these few things they priced at the end. So I didn't pay enough attention, I don't think, because the stuff here, <clears throat> um, these two aprons, the tablecloth and this belt, he priced at $30 total, which is probably a little bit more than I would have wanted to pay. Here's the belt, really cool, obviously. I love chain belts. This is really cute. Um, so... So, I don't know, I feel like 30 bucks for these few things is kind of on the high end. That chain belt itself, I can probably sell on Etsy for like 30 or 35 shipped based on some of the comps I did super quick. So, you know, um, I still really like it. It's cute. But let's get into the clothing. There is one piece in here that I'm pretty sure on its own pays for everything. So that's always a good kind of gauge. Um, but it's also like, how long is it going to take to sell? We don't know. All right, so I, I'm not doing things, you know, I like to save all the best stuff for last. I am going to try to save the one, like, pays for everything piece as the last piece, but everything's shoved in a bag, so we're just going to go from the top. So this dress is really cute, little 60s or 70s, I would say, right? It reminds me <clears throat> of those Deweese dresses, but it is not Deweese. I'll show you the tag in a second because it's fun. It has this smocked back. The smocking is a bit um, stretched out which is sad, but here is the tag on this little Frederick the Pollywood situation. And it does have these stiff cups, but they're not falling apart, which is always good. When you have these stiff kind of cups in there, a lot of times they get crumbly and yucky. So these have not done that. So this is really cute. The straps are adjustable. And I figure even with the smocking stretched out, it may still just fit a slightly larger size kind of as is which works out sometimes. I don't know, so we'll see. Very pretty though. I also didn't check, I tried to like do a cursory check over of everything as before I, I went and checked out, but I like this, yeah, this looks like it could use a soak, but it also feels like it's gonna be an easy soak. So there's that. So some of these things need a little bit of work. This is just a thermal, a vintage thermal shirt. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I have a mini fantasy project where I am taking thermals and I'm dyeing them fun colors and then like embellishing them somehow. So I love like the free people thermals with the cups that are fancy and all this stuff, if you are familiar with that. And I wanna make my own versions of them. So um, have I started doing it? Kind of, sort of, but not really. But this is another piece for the fantasy project that will I ever do? We don't know, but there we go. So, all right, let's see. These, these things were cool. These are just old hair bonnets. So, right, little net. And I know that in the past, these sell for some nice money, like 25 bucks-ish maybe. Um, I don't see them too often. I believe it goes on like this, right? So you put it on over your rollers or whatever. So I got this pink one really pretty. I have this green one, just a little green net. Um, it has been many years since I've tried looking these up to see what they go for. The woman literally, you know, like I said, they were pricing things individually, but these, she said, I don't care about those. And she shoved them in the bag. So they're kind of, they're kind of freebies. So I will probably, I mean, I'll look them up and comp them first. And then I may offer them up during a whatnot show. I have a lingerie whatnot sale scheduled. So maybe I'll stick those in with that. I don't know. We'll see. But, and then here's a black one. This one has some fades. So it's got this like sort of burgundy brown kind of coloring to it, but it's still pretty. There's all y'alls. Okay. This is a very neat mix of like fun 80s-ish stuff and like some other earlier things. In the photos, there was a, a ton of fun groovy like 60s prints, which is what I went for. But like I said, I missed most of the stuff that I was attracted to in the photos. So, uh. The other thing is that because this was in Queens, um, it's it cost me, I don't know what the, like 15 bucks just to get into the city. It cost to cross the bridge from Jersey into New York City. It's something like that. I have the toll pass, so it might be a little bit, it used to be like 12, but I think they raised their prices. Anyway, 12 or 15 bucks, something like that, just to get there, not counting gas or whatever. So it's like, 
another reason I don't really always want to do it. Um, look at this cute little red and white stripe. This is terry cloth and vintage Gatano. So that's really cute. Probably needs at least a wash, but adorable. Yeah. It's got like a little bit of staining, some pilling. So I'll soak it. We'll see how it comes out. It's nice and soft though. Stuff like that is fun. Again, not what I would have gone for, but it's there. So it's cute. This is cute. This is new old stock, little pink sweater. You can see, is it? She had a couple of the, I think maybe this isn't. There were some that she had like this that still had like their little price tags pinned to the front. Um, look at this tag. I love this. So this will go in a whatnot show also. It's really cute. Then I've got this thing. Oh, that's right. Never mind. I'm confusing this with something else, but still. Another one of these pretty little dresses, right? A little sundress kind of thing. The print is really lovely. It also has smocking at the back that's not in great condition. Um, let's see. Murray Meisner. So, so we'll see with this. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's the smocking has some stretch, but not tons. The this is like quilted, not, not that hard stuff. So that's better. Um, but again, I don't know if this is too stretched out, like if it'll just fit a slightly larger size or not. We'll see. Play around with it, but it was pretty. I may regret buying that because the smocking is more stretched than I thought. Then there's this, um, little vintage swimsuit. And this is really cute. Now this does have, here, wait, here's the back. So it buttons at the top, sort of a lower back, nice coverage there. I really like the, the print on this. That's adorable. This has those harder bra cups, but they didn't seem crumbly at all. They still seem like they're pretty flexible and in good shape. So that was nice. There was another swimsuit that was there that did seem, um, but it did have uh, bra cups that were just like completely crumbly. So let's see. I don't know if this has a tag or not. Let's see, all the innards seem to be in good condition, which is nice. Let's see, I'm trying to see if it's a fun brand, but I can't find a tag right now, so, which is fine, whatever. It's a cute swimsuit, regardless. There he is. All right, next. Let's see, another one of these sort of little sweater tops, right? This is the one that definitely is new old stock. You can see the little pin down there. And then here's her tag. And I'm pretty sure you were able to see it, but you know. So that's cute. Got a cute little collar on it. I sold something similar on it. I feel like on Etsy recently. Then I've got, this is fun. Again, would I have gone just for this stuff? No, but I would pick this up in a thrift store like this velour boat neck. that tag. So that's fun. I'll do that on whatnot. Sorry, busy. All right, let's see. This was a little set that seemed to be mothole free. So it's just um, a sweater knit skirt. And thankfully, the elastic's in decent condition. And then it has a little matching top. All right, that's cute. And the knit group is what the tag says. So she had a bunch of similar types of stuff. Um, you know, nothing like this to me was like the most unique one. A lot of them were just plain colors. Didn't really, they don't really rock my world. Like if it was St. John, I would have gotten it, but you know, maybe, maybe I would have gotten it. Maybe not. Then I got this velour top. This one's cute. All right. Look at that. I love the color. This like copper. I think this should sell nicely people will be excited for it. I'll do this on whatnot also. I don't see a tag, but it doesn't matter. It's so cute. All right, let's see. This sweater, which I think also needs a little bit of a bath. This is just really pretty colors and it's shimmery. It's got a little bit of shoulder pads in it. I feel like there was probably a skirt or something that went with this, but I don't know. Things were thrown all over the place. Um, it's crazy. Probably by the time I got in there, it was 930. So like an hour after the sale started and things were just destroyed. But that's what happens. That's why I don't like going right at the beginning. I want all the good stuff, but I don't want to be in that, you know? 
All right, this is a little house dress. It's cute. Let's see. Cute little print. There's a hole in one of the pockets. Um, and it does need a bath. There we go. There's a hole in the pocket. I can stitch that up and I probably will. It won't look super cute, but it's a basic little house dress. It's, you know, it'll do. So, all right, let's see. Then there's this, this was also fun, but I wouldn't have gone just for this type of stuff, but cute. Another little sort of terry cloth-ish sweater. There's the tag. All right, this is a little lingerie piece. Hopefully it's okay. I looked this over like twice while I was there. There we go. Just a swingy little kind of baby doll style. Nothing mind shattering, mind sh earth shattering, mind blowing, right? Um, needs a bath. Little cutie flower guys on there. So yeah, there was a really cute like flower power chiffon nighty, but it was shredded. So I was surprised somebody left it behind. And then when I was going through my stuff afterwards, it's like, oh, because it's shredded. That's why they left it behind. It makes sense. This is really pretty. The waistband on this is a little bit shot, but it does have like a button. Um, and this will fit just like, you know, whatever. It'll fit like a slightly larger size skirt. So the brand is a great brand. Cool. And this is Rayon. So it's two layers of rayon. There's this like sheer outer layer and then this like gauzy under layer. So it's really cute. This is pretty. I liked that. Let's see, we're getting close to the bottom. The bottom does sort of have all my good stuff because she was pricing things one at a time. I kind of made sure I got the stuff I was really excited about first and then kind of kept adding to it as the total kept being acceptable. So, all right, this is really cute. Um, this is a Liz Claiborne, Liz Sport top. Definitely needs a bath. I might end up keeping this one. I like it a lot. Feels like cotton. Little tie shoulders. Yeah, 97% cotton and 3% other. I don't know what that is. But there's the tag if you care about that. So that's adorable. I like it. Then, all right, let's see. This thing. This thing is really cute. This was in a drawer with some men's pajamas, which I think is part of the reason it was overlooked. I don't find stuff like this very often. So um, I know that at one point it was really in demand. I don't know if it still is. It's got this pair of shorts. They're like swim trunks. They do have like a liner in them, which does appear to be in acceptable condition. And it does have an elastic waist, but also a drawstring. So that's good. And then the top. So. There we go. Um, and it is like bark clothy, island creations, fashioned for leisure, pool, patio, beach, mark size medium. So there's the tag for that. And I actually have a friend who is into this kind of stuff. So I may ask her, I mean, I'll do regular comps and then maybe I'll ask her opinion slash offer it to her. Um, if she wants to buy it from me, like I'm friends with her, like acquainted, acquainted online. Um, so not necessarily a here it is for free kind of friend, but, <laughs> but definitely a first dibs for low price kind of friend. I also got this sweater. I don't know why this left behind. I obviously like these. Um, so this is really cute, right? This one I was very excited about. There's the tag and just super fun. So um, hopefully there's not some like surprise flaw waiting somewhere. It does need some depilling, which will be a little bit of work because it's kind of like individual flowers. So you can't just run a regular sweater shaver over it, but that's all right. I'll be able to get that stuff taken care of. And was it buttons? Oh, it has no buttons. That's why somebody left it behind, but that's okay. It has button loops. And I definitely will have something I can stick on here in place of the existing buttons. So that's really cute. This thing is super fun and I don't know why this was left behind, but I love it. It does need a little bit of a bath, but nothing too terrible. 
So that's the print. It's really fun. It does have a signature in the print. It's not Poochie. So this is like during Poochie's era. So everybody was like copycatting. So who's, I want to say it's Ed, Edmundo or Eduardo. I can't make out. I feel like I've come across it before. Um, the tag in the neck is Saks Fifth Avenue. I don't know if there's another, there is another tag, but it's sewn to the Saks tag, so I can't fully see it. Anyway, Saks Fifth Avenue. I'll figure it out. I'll look it up. There will be others like it. So this is cute, though. Even even without the signature, the signature is negligible to me since it's not poochy. Um, but, you know, there were others that were, it's cute. It's cute overall. It's like a little house coat kind of thing. And then, let's see, are we down to my final item? Maybe. But it's a doozy, I'll tell you that. So this is a two-piece set and gorgeous. I think that I can list this set on Etsy for like $200. I can't even find where it starts or ends. So here is the nightgown portion, right? Gorgeous, that's the top, I mean the front. It's got some bows down the back, really pretty. Just so much fabric. So this is just nylon with gathered, you know, gathered bust. There was a tag, is a tag, um, in the robe, which I'll show you in a moment. And I mean, this thing is just full sweep, like massive. And it doesn't seem to be stained. This was in like a dry cleaner bag. So it was kept very neat and clean. Okay, here's the tag. So I can't, it's, it's in like this gold thread. <laughs> I can't seem to make it out. Let's see. Where's my old lady trick here? Let me do that. My coffee that's, I'm sure, already undrinkable. I know you don't care necessarily what this tag is. Maybe you do. Maybe you're all dying to know. I'm like, please get out the magnifying glass, Laura. Elaine Sandra by Lucy something. Lucy Ann. So I think Lucy Ann is definitely like a, a brand that does well. Um, so I'll look it up. This, um, this is a gorgeous piece. So that's the nightgown portion. Just stunning. And then there's a robe and the robe is just like equally, if not more, full sweep. There's so much fabric here. Okay. It's almost like a double layer. So it's got this inner this inner nylon layer and then this outer chiffon and it's just like yards and yards of fabric and volume. It's gorgeous. So I know it's not doing it justice by me just holding it up here, but it is so freaking beautiful. Um, and just, oh, it's, it's so good. So this will go for some nice money. And this is the piece that I, oh, and look at this. That almost makes the whole thing, right? That alone. Um, this is the piece that I'm hoping will go for at least 200 bucks on Etsy. Now again, I'll list it. It'll sit probably for a long time, but you know, good things are worth the wait. I'm trying to see if it's got a size. It doesn't seem to have one listed here. Anyway, such a cool piece. So that's very exciting. So this alone, hopefully, makes the whole thing worthwhile and then everything else will be like fun little stuff to put up on whatnot. Um, I'm gonna get to work on that. I have my whatnot lingerie show is my next show and it's got a lot of stuff preloaded so I'm a little bit ahead of my game on whatnot right now. So that's good. And then all this other stuff to deal with. So hopefully that'll be good. It wasn't like the big bang of an estate sale that I was hoping for, but it was fun. The other thing I'm considering doing, uh, I keep fearing the Goodwill outlet. Same same reasons. I don't want to deal with the, the like frantic energy of it. But I have to drop one of my kitty cats off for a um, dental visit, which is like a drop them off for the day kind of situation. And the vet is nearby. So I may drop them and then go head over to the Goodwill outlet. Just let's see what happens. And um, But we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to be down for doing that yet or not. But see how it goes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you tune into some of my whatnot shows because they're fun 
and you can get good deals on them or get less good deals on Etsy and eBay, Depop, whatever. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have fun. I'll see you again soon. Real quick little update. I went and started doing some research on the Penoir set. Uh, watch it. It's going to sell me some money. There's one listed on Etsy for $877. There's another, it's like $650. There's another one that's like 450. So uh, I think 200 is a little bit conservative. And I think I'm probably going to try for like maybe 350, close to 400. We'll see how long it takes to sell, but yay.